Therefore, I shall seek to establish why gun amnesties are best in dealing with the reduction of illegal gun possession in Dominica. We know that compared to other methods, gun amnesties present a peaceful approach to addressing the reduction of illegal possessed firearms. Imagine the outcome if the authorities were to use an iron rod to reduce the number of illegal firearms in the country. People would retaliate with violence and protests and even develop hatred towards the police, re resulting in individual, individuals retaliating and refusing to cooperate with the police when future events or crimes occur. Methods such as police raids are severe. When people's personal space is being invaded, whether or not they have something to hide, they feel uncomfortable and they feel threatened, and this might result in people retaliating. Let's be honest for a moment as you answer this question. Have you ever gotten a call which informed you that the police were out in a particular area doing spot checks or searching vehicles? Do you know how many people call their friends to tell them that the police are out and they should not transverse the road until they get an all clear because their registration or license are expired? My friends, we have received video footage of the police on their way up to Grand Bay to do random searches. Can you imagine what it would be like if the police were to do more raids? As soon as people see the police, they call their friends to tell them, hide the guns. Madam Moderator, illegal gun holders would automatically make it more difficult for their guns to be found. They would find even more innovative means to conceal them. And when people feel that they are not trusted, they will not talk to the police. Already the mentality of snitches get stitches exists amongst our populace. How much worse it would be if police were to do raids all over the island. We can therefore conclude that police rates have proven to be not as effective, thus forcing the authorities to consider a more effective method in the form of amnesties. Secondly, Madam Moderator, do you know that gun amnesties are in fact community policing? It is a method that the police are using to help us to help ourselves. Well, my friends, by using gun amnesties, which is the best method of reducing illegal gun possession, we are in fact helping to keep our country safe. When people take responsibility for their safety, they enjoy their peace even more. When people are actively involved in policing, they will seek to be their brother's keeper. Judges, we are not saying that the other ways may not produce the desired outcome, but amnesties are the best way to deal with reduction of illegal gun possession. We do not want people to be afraid of the police. We want them to trust them, to cooperate them, to cooperate with them, to talk with them. The Minister of National Security, in a DNO News article dated September 2023, stated that, and I quote, the fight against illegal firearms is not one that can be fought by the authorities alone, end quote. The long and short of it is, we need each other. And by implementing a gun amnesty, we are in fact using the best method to deal with illegal gun possession in Dominica. Thirdly, Madam Moderator, in our research, we came across a number of Caribbean countries that are implementing gun amnesties for this year, 2024. Some countries, like St. Kitts, are considering how they should tweak it to suit their needs. And Antigua undertook theirs in 2022, according to Caribbean Times, 2022. According to Loop Caribbean News, dated February 4th, 2024, St. Vincent and the Grenadines will introduce their gun amnesty from March 1st to May 31st, 2024. The St. Vincent Police Force will take gun amnesty discussions to the community during the month of February. It is hoped that by doing these outreach sessions, the public will be sensitized on the importance of an amnesty and will see the potential to trust the police by bringing in illegal guns. According to Caribbean News Weekly, Anguilla held their amnesty from January 26, 2024 to February 12, 2024. Madam Moderator, these small island states have recognized the constraints with which they are faced. One such constraint is the issue of small budgets for dealing with illegal gun possession. 
They must therefore be innovative and use peaceful methods that will produce results in the most cost-effective way. With limited Coast Guard resources and limited police resources on the island, how do we expect to reduce illegal gun possession? Tell me how, but by amnesties. The gun amnesty gets the, street off in a, gets the guns off the street in a calm and voluntary manner, which prevents the citizens from retaliating and feeling like they have no rights. It gets the firearms off the streets without brutality, and this is what makes the gun amnesty the best way to reduce the use of illegal guns in Dominica. I have quoted many words from our dearest ministers, but before I go, I would like to share one more quote that we, are that we strive to achieve to benefit our country. Our Prime Minister said in his, con in his song, and I quote, We can see all, but no guns, no violence. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kishma. Kishma spoke for seven minutes and 32 seconds. Our final speaker in this the first um, round of, of this afternoon is Ms. Joanne L. Sira, who is speaking for the opposing school, ITSS. I invite Joanne L. to come to the podium. Respected audience, the famous American psychologist Abraham Maslow articulated, if the only tool you have is a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. This profound statement captures a concept known as the law of instrument, emphasizing the tendency to rely on familiar or preferred tools. While these tools may be useful, they are overused merely to approaching problems in ways that are not always beneficial and in some cases, even detrimental. Thus, in connection with our discussion today, the gun amnesties are presented as a solution. It is imperative to recognize that alternative approaches exist for addressing the issue of illegal firearm possession within Dominica. Just as Maso advocated for a very toolkit to approach challenges, we firmly believe in the importance of adopting multiple strategies that go beyond the singular focus of gun amnesties. Esteemed audience, we want to bring to your attention an article by the U.S. Department of State titled U.S. Caribbean Cooperation to Stop Firearm Trafficking in 2023. The article states that the United States and the Caribbean islands have partnered to reduce the illegal possession of firearms through various approaches, such as ongoing cooperation, training, establishment of the gun intelligence units, and capacity building support to increase ports and border security. Additionally, the Caribbean Firearm Study, published in 2023, propose the following strategies, I quote, develop search capacity in customs and practice frequent policing to address sudden increases in firearm availability, ensure consistent, transparent, and accountable firearm licensing procedures, and implement standardized firearm control, including policies, laws, and regulations. Furthermore, in the interview with Corporal Ismail of the CID Firearms Department, she suggested education for the public, stringent laws, and advanced technology for detection. My esteemed audience, these alternative strategies are more proactive measures that are needed to solve the issue at its core. As a nation, our firearm possession issues cannot depend solely on gun amnesty efforts. We must adopt a proactive stance by investing in equipment, technology, and human resource capacities that can be used to prevent or reduce the illegal possession of firearms in our country. Let's take example from these other islands. In 2022, 
Nation News reported about 35 guns and over 700 rounds of ammunition were seized in a part of Bridgestone Barbados as a result of strategic police operations. The Jamaica Gleaner 2024 reported I caused more than 119 illegal guns and hundreds of assorted rounds of ammunition were seized as a result of joint intelligence operations between Jamaican and American law enforcement. End quote. Respected judges, wouldn't you agree that these alternative measures yield greater success? It is the truth and nothing but the truth. Gun amnesties fail to reduce illegal firearm possession. Finally, my esteemed audience, gun amnesties fail to address the broader issue at hand, which is the illegal possession of firearms. While this strategy may result in the recovery of a few weapons, it does not address the fundamental problem of individuals possessing firearms illegally. The focus is on collecting existing weapons rather than preventing new ones from entering illegal circulation. As such, this cannot be the best option when it fails to address the root cause. Respected judges, just last month, Dominica News Online 2024 reported that a former Minister of Government who is also currently employed in the office of the Prime Minister was caught red-handed importing illegal firearms accessories into our country. Respected, respected audience, the million dollar question is, did the gun amnesty, which was conducted a mere month before, deter the citizen of high standing? Obviously, it did not. Not even a citizen who should be of exemplary conduct was impacted by the gun amnesty initiative that took place two months back and my with the opponents. Stand here and tell us that the young men of Tarish Pit and Silver Lake will be impacted by such a program. This is appalling. Respected judges, gun amnesty does not, in no shape or form, reduce illegal firearm possession in Dominica. Rather, it encourages criminals and even supposedly law-abiding citizens to go out, get their guns illegally, and do their crime. Because... There comes a time when they can give it up without facing any consequences. My worthy opponents, this does not add up. Gun amnesty presents no preventative measures, nor does it protect innocent citizens. Then you see the and say, this is the best solution. While guns are still being acquired and circulated within Dominica, endangering the lives of everyone here, hypocrisy. As such, my capable colleague and I agree that implementing a non-prosecution period for individuals to surrender unregistered or illegal guns is not the most effective or most successful method for reducing the unlawful ownership of firearms in the hands of the public. In closing, the opposing team asks, is this the best way? When the strategy has proven to be highly ineffective in Dominica and across the region, we ask, is this the best way? addressing an urgent issue with a risky and temporary solution. We cry, is this the best way, when there are other effective approaches to reduce the issue. We plea, is this the best way, when sadly fails to address the issue at hand. My colleague and I stand resolute that this is not the best way. The opposition has rested its case. I thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Joannel. Joannel spoke for seven minutes and 11 seconds. So we are here this afternoon with the topic, gun amnesties are the best way to reduce the illegal firearm possession issue in Dominica. Dominica Grammar School has been proposing that topic with Ilianette Jolly as the first speaker and Kishma Theophil as the second speaker. Opposing that topic is ITSS, Isaiah Thomas Secondary School. Amelia Charles is our first speaker, and Joannelle Sarah has been our second speaker. 
The sponsors for this afternoon's quarterfinals have been Domlek, Lindomax, Fine Foods Inc., the KFC, the National Cooperative Credit Union, and Josephine Gabriel and Company Limited as our main sponsors, I could say our platinum sponsors. And also assisting with sponsorship, we have um, Q95 Radio, DBS Radio, UWI Global Campus, Freeman Consulting Group, LLC, Dominica News Online, Vibian TV, HHP Research and Company Limited. HHP Research is sponsoring the tokens for the judges this afternoon. Lovely Things, Lovely Things is sponsoring the gift for our best speaker this afternoon. Also sponsoring is Finance Focus, 